Good morning, everybody. This is Michael Feebig with Feebig Architecture. And uh, today we're going to be doing a quick lesson on architectural considerations for solar panel retrofitting on low slope roof systems. Um, as more and more existing buildings are being retrofitted with uh, solar panels uh, throughout the country, it's important for uh, design professionals, uh, contractors, building owners and managers to be able to assess the their existing buildings as to the suitability of providing a solar panel system or installing a solar panel system. So this, this uh, presentation is intended to give some pointers on um, important considerations related to retrofitting existing roofs for new solar panel um, installation. So in retrofitting an existing low slope roof for solar panel installation, there are several important factors to consider. The, we're gonna go over a few of them today, um, including the structural load capacity of the roof, the load capacity of the individual components of the roof, and maintaining performance requirements of the roof. So first, when you're considering the uh, addition of a solar panel array onto a, an existing roof, the first and most important thing to consider uh, in most cases is whether or not the existing roof structure that would be the structural components of the roof system, that would be the deck, the structural deck, the primary roof support members, uh, those are going to be like your primary beams and columns supporting the roof, the secondary members, those would be things like the joists spanning between the primary members, whether or not that structure can handle the weight of a new solar panel system. So typically in the uh, design of, of uh, structural roofs, you've got, you've got dead load and live load considerations. The dead loads are those uh, portions of the roof that are, are permanent or, or for all intended purposes permanent and add weight to the roof. Uh, live loads, contrary to that, are, are things that are not permanent on the roof, but do impart loads onto the roof. Generally, the, the easiest way to think about a live load is, is people on the roof. So you got to make sure the roof is, is suitable to carry the weight of all applicable live loads, all applicable dead loads. The addition of the solar panel system onto the roof is going to add a lot of new dead load onto that roof. So you, you wanna make sure that you have an engineering evaluation done to make sure that the structure can support the intended weight of, of the new solar panel system. Th this, is, this is one that uh, most people would, would understand is, is one of the most important things to, to take a look at. But above and beyond the actual structural members and their ability to uh, support the new solar panel system. We also need to consider this, the load capacity of the individual components of the roof. So we need to consider the effects of adding concentrated loads onto the roof assembly components, things like the cover board. If, if you have a, um, a membrane roof, it's, there's a possibility you've got a cover board under that membrane. Um, that provides a surface upon which the roof membrane is, is attached. And many of these cover boards can be made of different materials. There's gypsum based cover boards, cementitious or cement board, uh, roof boards, mineral fiber boards, and, and others. And some of these boards are more, uh, are more able to resist compressive strength than others. So it's important that you consider the cover board if you have one on the roof and whether or not it um, is at risk of being damaged due to additional point loads being introduced onto the top of the roof. Another consideration is the actual insulation above the roof deck. If you have the type of roof um, that, that includes rigid insulation on top of the structural roof deck, um, make sure that you consider the compressive strength values of that insulation. A lot of that roof insulation is not necessarily rated to, um, to be able to withstand high compressive strength uh, loads. And so if, if, you, if you have a, 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 an existing roof that has soft insulation on it, um, just make sure that you're aware that the, 
the weight of the new solar panels uh, may may actually crush or or uh, squish the insulation down. Um, and then another consideration is the actual roof itself. If, if you have a membrane roof, which many low slope uh, roofs do, uh, consider the effects of the solar panel on the actual membrane of the roof itself. So think about in the context of if you have a, uh, a fully adhered roof versus a mechanically attached or mechanically fastened roof membrane. In, in the case of a, of a fully adhered roof, um, you don't have to worry as much about, about um, billowing of the membrane or, or kind of flapping of the membrane in, in high wind circumstances. Whereas if you have a, a, a roof that's mechanically fastened, um, when during high wind events, you, you tend to get some billowing of the membrane or, or fluttering around of the membrane. And if you put a new solar panel system on top of, of that type of roof, just be aware of the potential damaging effects of a fluttering or billowing membrane against the, uh, the point load where the new solar panels are transferring that load into the roof system. At those points of transfer, uh, billowing and fluttering of the roof membrane may actually uh, cause some damage to the membrane. So above and beyond just the structure, these individual components all have to be considered as well in, in the uh, potential application of a new solar panel system. Uh, there is a very handy AIA, that's the American Institute of Architects article on solar ready design, uh, linking that article here. Um, a few choice comments. Uh, related to, to this, uh, quote, damage is another important consideration. While ballasted solar panel mounting systems can be cost effective, they can add significant weight to the roof and may also shift and flutter during high winds and seismic activity. This movement could lead to damage of the roof membrane that is detrimental to the satisfactory long-term roof system performance, according to the National Roofing Contractors Association. So that's kind of like what we talked about, how um, the potential exists for damage to the to the roof membrane when you add a solar panel system. Uh, ballasted panels are are those panels that rely on on the weight of of concrete block or or just weighted materials to just use gravity to hold those solar panels onto the roof. That's different than than say retrofitting the roof with a um, like a pipe support or structural support that that uh, bypasses the roof assembly itself and just goes straight to the structure. In those, in those cases, um, you're gonna eliminate a lot of these potential problems, but it, it, it's a lot more expensive because in that, in that scenario, then you're actually cutting, patching, removing the roof at, at areas to, to install new structure. So typically in, in a retrofit circumstance, most people are gonna be looking at ballasted solutions, but those, those are the solutions that then can cause more problems. Um, as we're talking about today. Uh, next, it says, quote, include an adhered high compressive strength cover board directly beneath the roof membrane to withstand increased foot traffic, enhance system durability and extend the life expectancy of the roof. So that's, that's the cover board that we talked about. Um, high compressive strength cover boards are gonna be um, those that, that can withstand the weight without, without uh, compromising the board itself. Uh, and then lastly, quote, for a ballasted system, use high compressive strength insulation, a minimum of two layers staggered and offset. Um, these systems should also include a protection or separation sheet adhered to the membrane. So the point of the high compressive strength insulation is, is to handle the, the weight of the ballasted roof solar panel uh, system on the roof without crushing the insulation. And that's also why you wanna stagger and offset the joints. In, in those boards, because if, if you stack the joints, then you're basically creating um, a weak point. And if, if it so happens that you have a point load right on a joint, it, it's possible that, that uh, you're gonna have an increased potential for, um, uh, for, for the, the panel to sag or sink a little bit into the roof. So, so you, you definitely wanna consider the type of insulation. And if you can um, use a high compressive strength or verify if you have a high compressive strength um, insulation on the roof before you put the solar panels on. Uh, because 
th this sort of thing is what what might might occur. Uh, th this photograph is a picture of a ballasted uh, solar panel foot, and you can see what's basically happening is all of the weight of of the solar panel and the ballast is actually causing the uh, the little bearing foot of of the uh, frame to compress the underlying components of the roof and actually creating low points and sinking into the roof. Uh, here's another uh, example of, of this happening where, where you, you introduce new weight and new point loads onto a roof and it actually sinks into the roof. So you gotta be careful about that sort of thing happening. Uh, we also wanna talk about maintaining the performance requirements of the roof. So in, in this video, we're just gonna talk about a few things. One is fall protection for maintenance personnel and the question of whether or not roof guards may be needed, uh, maintaining the slope of the roof for drainage, uh, because even, even low slope roofs, they're, they're not flat. They do, they do have a, a minimum slope for drainage. And so you wanna make sure that the introduction of a new solar panel system is not gonna compromise the ability of that roof to drain. And then lastly, you wanna maintain emergency personnel access, right? Because when you put a new solar panel system onto the roof, um, you just need to consider the fact that there are access requirements for emergency personnel that need to be maintained. And it's possible if you fill a roof with solar panels that you may actually be um, uh, compromising the ability for emergency access uh, wh where that's needed. So as far as fall protection of the roof goes, um, the, build, the International Building Code, in, in this case, we're just looking at the 2012, but it, it's gonna be generally in, in the same section, no matter what code edition you're looking at. There's a section um, that talks, that, that says, quote, guards shall be provided where appliances, equipment, fans, roof hatch openings, or other components that require service are located within 10 feet of a roof edge or the open side of a walking surface um, and such surface is more than 30 inches above the floor, roof, or grade below. So the, when it comes to solar panels, solar panels are a, um, uh, a, a they, they do require maintenance. They do require periodic service and maintenance. First and foremost thing that comes to mind is, is cleaning. Uh, solar panels do need to be cleaned on a regular and routine basis to keep, uh, to keep them from getting covered with debris or dust or uh, just just being weathered, they need to be clean in order to to be optimally performing. So, personnel working on on the roof, uh, they are required to be provided fall protection, right? And uh, here's a picture of solar panels on on an open roof edge, and you just have to be careful about situations like this because you don't want maintenance personnel to be up there cleaning the roof and having no no fall protection, right? If, if they slip or if the wind blows or something happens, uh, it, it, it's hazardous for, for them to be so close to the edge of a roof without any sort of guard or fall protection. So you wanna consider that when you're, when you're considering putting a solar panel system on an existing roof. Uh, next is roof slope for drainage. Uh, for low slope roofs, code generally requires minimum slopes of a quarter inch per foot. Uh, this is one quarter unit in vertical in 12 units horizontal or 2%. And this typically is achieved either by sloping the roof structure or by sloping uh, the insulation built up on top of the roof deck. And as we talked about before, if you have a soft insulation or an insulation that's not actually rated uh, to handle the compressive um, uh, strength loads imparted onto them from the solar panels, you, you may actually compress and squish the insulation a little bit. And if, if, the, ins if, the, if the insulation is the uh, means by which the roof is draining, meaning it's a tapered insulation and it gets crushed or squished, then you are going to likely compromise the ability of that roof to drain. Uh, so you need to be careful about that. You need to consider that. And then of course, the, the structure. If, if the structure itself is sloped uh, to drain and the addition of, of the, uh, the solar panels, uh, in addition to just considering whether or not the structure can handle that load, you need to consider the, the potential of, of deflection on that structure. 
and whether or not the deflection is going to hinder uh, or potentially hinder the ability of that roof to drain. If, if the slope is built into the structure and the structure is deflecting due to the new solar panels, uh, you may be compromising the ability of that roof to drain. So you got to consider that as well. And then of course we have um, emergency personnel access. Uh, and if you look in the fire code, the international fire code, um, there are sections for solar for photovoltaic power systems, access and pathways. Um, and here's what it says, quote, shall provide not less than four feet clear around roof access hatch with at least one not less than four feet clear pathway to the parapet or roof edge. And so this is important because um, emergency personnel, uh, firefighters, if, if they do need to get on top of a roof to, to fight a fire, and this sometimes does happen because uh, sometimes what fire personnel will do if, if there is a raging fire, what they one, one, one potential technique to uh, help uh, control the fire and, and extinguish it is gonna be actually cutting giant vent openings in the roof to, to vent the smoke. And so in order to do that, the fire department has to have access to the roof and not just access to the roof, they need to have a clear path of travel um, uh, to the parapet and roof edge. So make sure that if you're putting your solar panels on top of an existing roof that you do so in a manner that maintains um, that required access, that you're not inadvertently blocking or in inhibiting uh, emergency personnel access as required by the fire code. So other considerations are gonna be uh, found in the building code. You've got the international building code, international residential code, international fire code, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, you know, these codes apply, not, they don't all apply to every project, but um, depending on the type of, of building that you have, you'll need to look into the applicable code to see what else may be required there. Uh, it, the product and manufacturer instructions, this is everything from the roof membrane to the insulation, to the cover board, to the structure. Um, all of these manufacturers and, and products may have uh, recommendations or instructions specific to solar panels. So you wanna make sure that you uh, review any of, any of those relevant documents. And then of course we have industry standards such as the National Roofing Contractors Association and others which, which also can provide some uh, guidance and other considerations for uh, solar panel installation. So because of the complexity of this issue, we do highly recommend that, that you consult with a licensed design professional, be it a structural engineer or an architect or another professional of some sort uh, to, to ensure that these requirements are, are complied with. So with that, I, I hope that you enjoyed this presentation and uh, we will see you next time. Thank you for watching.